this is Christy Folk with Create with Christy. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator, and I'm here to showcase the Christmas Time is Here suite that will become available to customers this Friday, November 1st. I love this suite. It's so pretty. I've always liked roses, and it is a real versatile set. Yes, it's featuring for Christmas, but you can also use it for so many different other things. I just really love these flowers. And today I'm going to share you this card. Tomorrow I will be doing another video here on YouTube, and it will be a card made with a different stamp set, but still using products in the suite, so I can show that you can use it for other things. And it will be another Christmas card, though. I'm gearing up for my Christmas season for sure. And then on Friday, I'm going to do a Facebook Live to show all the products that are in the suite, the prices, and I'm also going to demonstrate a card and a little um, treat box for you. So if you want to see my, my Facebook Live, I've got my Facebook page link down below in the description, and it'll be at 3 p.m. Eastern Time this Friday, November 1st. Hope you can join me. Okay, so let's go and get this started. Like I said, I love the images on this. I love the detail in it. This is all going to be stamped. I'm going to show you how to do it. I'm going to do it with a Stamparatus. You can definitely do it without it, but a Stamparatus makes it so much easier. And I love the highlights in this. It looks like I um, watercolored it and left highlights. It's so pretty. Okay, let's get started. Okay, here's the stamp set. This is called Christmas Rose. The neat thing about this stamp set is that you're going to get a cling stamp, which is a rubber, red rubber stamp, and you're also going to get a photopolymer stamp set. This all comes together. The stamp set itself is $38, but you'll be able to bundle it with the dies, and I'll show you those here in a minute. But here's the cling one. So this one is just the outline, the big outline of the flower. And I think the reason it's with rubber, they can get better lines with the rubber. It stamps better that way. So I'll give you a better uh, stamping image. Then the photopolymer, they've got these photopolymer, so you can line them up inside the images of this one, which I think is so cool. Yes, red does tend to um, stain the stamps, but they still work perfectly. You can still see through them. So don't worry about that. They're actually clean. I'm going to be using almost every stamp in this on this card. So there's the stamp set. You can also bundle it. So I'll kind of put this over here to the side. You can also bundle it with the um, rose dies. Now these by themselves are $30, but if you bundle these two together, you're going to save 10% and it's only going to be $61 to get the stamp set and the dies. But you've got a nice big image one that die cuts this beautiful image out. We've got some uh, great label dies for the greetings, neat little ornate embellishments you can die cut, little border, just a lot of neat uh, dies. So those that's the rose dies and you can bundle those together. And then other things I'm going to be using, I'm going to be using the stitched labels dies. And I'm going to be using the largest one here. So I'm put that in my little dish. And I probably should go ahead and get these out too. I'll be using this die, this and this little die. And I think that's, yeah, that's all I'm going to use on this card. Now I'm going to show you all the cardstock that you need. First off, you're going to use a piece of Mossy Meadow. This is five and a half by eight and a half. And I'm going to go ahead and fold this in half and put it to the side for later. Just gonna get my card base all ready. Put that over here at the side. You're also gonna need a piece of Whisper White. This is the inside of the card that's five and a quarter by four. You're gonna need a piece of, um, another piece of Whisper White that's five by three. This is for the um, label, the uh, stitch nested label. You're gonna need a piece of Whisper White that is three and a half by four and three quarter. And this is for the floral die cut. And then this little small piece that's about two and a half by one and a half for the greeting. And then here is part, a piece of the beautiful Christmas Time is Here Specialty Designer Series paper. It are 12, 12 by 12 sheets. And what makes a special, the specialty is the gold foil that's in it. So you can see this one here that I'm pointing to has some gold in it. And this one you get three different designs, but you get four of each design and they are double sided. So there's the other side for this one. Love this paper, and I'll be showing that in my Facebook Live on Friday, November 1st. And you also need a piece of cherry cobbler. This one is five and a quarter by four. And then a piece of the beautiful gold shimmer ribbon. It's a quarter inch wide. 
I love this ribbon. I know I say love a lot, but it is so pretty and it's, you're gonna love it with the color combo. And this one is a seven inch piece. And you'll get 10 yards of that in a spool for $7. Okay, so we've got the card folded. Let's go ahead and bring in the cherry cobbler. I'm gonna bring in my snail and I'm gonna put the designer series paper right along the top. Now this is the easiest part of the card. Now this is gonna be at the top of the card, but so I can see that I'm definitely getting it lined up with the edge. I'm gonna do it upside down for a second. This helps me for uh, lining it up. So we've got that, so that's actually how it's gonna be. Now I'm gonna bring in my ribbon, put some snail on each end, okay? And I'm gonna wrap it along the bottom of the designer series paper. I'll make sure it's straight. That looks pretty good. Okay, now we're ready to put it on the card base. As soon as you get the ribbon on, then you know you're safe. Okay, and I always make sure I put some snail on the ribbon or bring the card base back in. Get that centered. It's a little easier when you can put your head over the card. <laughs> there we go. So that's all ready. So I'll put that over to the side. Okay, now that we've got the card base ready, let's get some stamping going. Let's bring in the Stamparatus. First, I want to take one of my magnets off. Oops. Make sure that's in the video. Okay, there we go. Bring it down a little bit. Okay, now I'm going to bring in my piece of Whisper White. This is a three and a half by four and three quarter. And I'm going to line it up here with this dark line here. This is the one inch mark. You can put it in the corner, but for this, this part, I'm not gonna put it in the corner. I will the rest of the time. But now I'm gonna bring in the big floral image. I just don't want this rubber getting knocked up against the edge here, because I didn't make this paper very big. It just fits. So go ahead and do this. Get that on. And now I'm gonna bring in my Tuxedo Black Memento. Get this inked up real well. I like doing the Stamparatus, using the Stamparatus with this big image because if I don't get all of it stamped real well, I can go back and re-ink it and stamp it again. Okay, let's see how we go. Okay, no, oh, it's not too bad. Those berries are a little light right there. Everything else looks really good. Oh, I did miss a spot here. So let's go ahead and do that again. Let's see how that goes. Just that one little section is what it looks like it needs like I didn't put enough pressure on it. Oh, isn't that great? Isn't that neat? I could fix that so easy. Okay, now we're gonna be using some photopolymer stamps the rest of the time, since this is the only cling one. So let me get this one cleaned off real quick. I'm gonna get it off, take it off, because we don't need it right anymore. Okay. Now I'm gonna bring in my mats, put my magnet over here, just to make sure I don't have any metal around because I don't want that clashing on something. Now I'm gonna use two mats. This is our basic, uh, bl the black one that comes with the Stamparatus. Then I bought this deluxe one because I like having that grid there. Now you could, you could do it with just the one, but I think it stamps better on the photopolymer if you have both of them. It ensures a better uh, stamped image. So I'm, especially when you're working with the corner, and I want to work with the corner now because I want this to go in the exact same spot every time. Sometimes when you line it up with the line, you may not get it in the exact right spot. So I'm going to put that in the corner, and that's the other reason I'm using the double mats because I think it works better that way. Now I'm going to bring in the flower. Here's the rose flower, my nice red stained one. But as you can see, you can still see through it even though it's stained. I'm going to line it up with the image. Let's see here. That looks pretty good. Maybe move that over a little bit. Bring that up. And now I'll bring in my cherry cobbler and ink that up. And bring this down. Stamp it. Put pressure on everywhere. Bring it up. And it looks like I missed some spots. So let's go ahead that middle especially. It should be, there is some white area in there, but it shouldn't be that much. So now just make sure it's all the way up in the corner again. And it is. Okay. 
much better. Very pretty. Okay, so now we're done with that. Just so I don't get ink all over my area, I'm gonna clean that one off. Okay, I'm gonna turn this over. And now we're gonna do all those little berries. And this is when I really am glad I've got the Stamparatus out. So this one is gonna line up here. And the trick I have learned, especially with these littler ones, how make sure it doesn't get on your fingernail. It like the stamp likes to stick to your fingernail and it will move on you will get it all lined up and then it moves on you it drives you crazy so i learned that the hard way the first time i used this i was getting so frustrated now the one thing with this one make sure that they are all sometimes this little uh, thing that juts out likes to move a little bit so i always make sure i've got it all oops it hit my fingernail see you don't want that to happen. Now, all the berries look really lined up. That's probably the hardest one to line up because there's so many different berries. That lined up pretty good on this one. goes over here. These smaller ones aren't quite as hard to line up, except when they stick on your fingernail. Come on, Christy. There we go. That's better. It's good that they stick to the uh, blocks real well, but not when they stick to your fingernail. There we go, that's lined up pretty good. Sometimes it sticks to your finger a little bit, because but the oils in your hand help that. Okay, I'm going to do a once over again. That looks really good. I think they're all lined up. Bring these up. Now see, because they're photopolymer, they do like to stick to the paper, so that's why I'm doing it in the corner. I'm pushing it up real snug, and now I know it's still going to line up. I'm going to ink all these up. And they should line up pretty good, especially since I double checked a few times. There's one time I tried to do it too fast and they didn't line up very well at all. And that was my fault. Oh, that looks pretty good. Now this, I probably don't, wouldn't mind if those lined up a little better, or not lined up, but inked up a little better. So that's these over here. There, that's better. See, that lined up pretty good. They're off a little bit, but not bad. I'm, I'm happy with that. Okay, now I'm going to bring in the ones for the leaves. And we're going to stamp these with Mossy Meadow. And the neat thing with this, see how they're, it's going to wrap around all of these images, the berries, that pine cone. It's only going to stamp the leaves. Now these are easier to line up. So there's that section. And then there's this section. So if you wanted to mass produce this card, it would be a lot easier with your Stamparatus. Once you've got it lined up, so I'm doing all the hard work. I could have done all of this ahead of time, but I wanted you to see the first one that you make, it does take a little lining up to get it all together. But then once it's on there and you always put it in the corner, you're not gonna have any problem whatsoever. And you would want to, um, Make sure that you keep your um, the big image here that we stamped first on the block on here. I'm not mass producing it. That's that's why I went ahead and took it off. And I forgot I could have gone ahead and just left it on because we're only going to use four sides. This is the last time I'm going to have to line up stamps for the Stamparatus. So if you do this at home and want to mass produce them, keep that big one on your Stamparatus because you'll have enough sides. Okay, that looks pretty good. So now I'm going to bring this top one down. See, I'm going to still have another side, so that's why I couldn't remember that. I made this card quite a while ago, so I couldn't remember. Make sure it's back in the corner again. I'm going to ink them all up with my Mossy Meadow. Bring that down. And you do have to do a little more pushing when you've got the double mat because it does make it a little thick. Oh, that did good the first time. Oh, isn't that gorgeous? I love it. Now, I could go ahead and do the pine cone, but you have to keep moving it, so I'm just going to do that with a regular stamp. But isn't that pretty? Now that everything is lined up, I just have to go and just do a whole bunch of them. It's really easy. So, that, like I said, the first time it takes a little time lining it all up, but then after that, easy peasy. Okay, I'm going to bring in my Stampin' Pierce mat, because I do a lot better with that, I'm gonna bring in my little pine cone. Now this one's pretty easy to line up, so I'm gonna use my early espresso. Here's a pine cone right here. 
There we go. It does a pretty good job. It's a lot easier when you aren't doing a video. It's hard to line things up. There we go. See, that looks really good. Very easy. That is ready to be die cut. And we've got one more thing to stamp, so I'll hurry up and do that. This is my uh, two and a half by one and a half piece. I'm gonna bring in the May This Christmas Fill Your Heart with Warmth and Love. Grab my early espresso. I'm gonna stamp it close to the middle. It doesn't have to be perfect, because we're gonna die cut it. There we go. Okay, let's go ahead and get all the stamping done. Let's bring in the Stampin' Pierce mat and my grid paper. This is actually the grid paper that fits the Stamparatus. But for videos, it just seems a little easier to use a smaller one when I don't need it the whole time. Get my rows all stamped up. I've put it on a block now. Oops, forgot my piece. This is the five and a quarter by four inch piece Whisper White. I'm just gonna kind of put this rose here in the left corner in the bottom. There we go. And then I'm gonna stamp the pretty Merry Christmas stamp with my early espresso. That looks pretty good. And I'm gonna put it right there. Perfect. So there's the inside of the card. Looks like I got a little ink on there, but that's all right. And since this is all done, I'm gonna go ahead. See, I did mess up. I love having two sides. I didn't ink up the stamp very well and it had a line in it. So that's a much better image on this side. Put this in there like so, and the inside of the card will be done. There we go. Now I'll bring in the die cutting machine. Let's get the ink pads out of the way here so I've got this in the screen. And we're using magnetic platform. Oops, my standard cutting pads are sticking together. I'm gonna go ahead and bring this in. I think I can do both at the same time. So we'll bring in the image, one. Oops, upside down. And once again, these are our new dies where all you have to do is line up the image. You don't have to make sure the white space around it is the same width all the way around. You just make sure you line up the image. Very easy. And then this is one of the label dies and the rose dies set. That looks pretty straight. And we'll put that through the die cutting machine. And then we've got one more thing to cut out, and that's the stitched nested label. So there we've got these already. I'm gonna put these right here next to my, don't need those ink pads, so let's get those out of the way. I don't wanna get ink on my images. And now I'm gonna be doing, yeah, I'll take that back. I'm getting ahead of myself. But first I'm gonna die cut. So I'm gonna take this largest stitched label and then my five by three Whisper White I'm gonna run it through my die cutting machine. Now, you can see that these points are kind of hanging over, that's okay. I could have made it a little longer. I like to use as little cardstock as possible. But that's gonna be plenty for the label. Because as you can see, it's cut, the blade is actually inside. So that's how I knew it'd be all right. Take this out. And now I am going to emboss this. So I need to get a different sandwich here. I still need my cutting pads. Bring in this platform. The magnetic one's a little too fat. And then I'm gonna bring in the stylish scroll. And I'll put it in like this. Fold first. And run it through. And then we'll be done with the die cutting machine. Let's get that out of the way. And I love this. Isn't that pretty? It's such a pretty, well, let me bring it down because I'm not sure if it's focusing right, but such a pretty uh, embossed image. I love it. Okay, now I'm gonna show how you can make this stand out even more. I'm gonna bring in the Delicata Golden Glitz. And I'm just brushing this on lightly, but you just keep doing it until you get your desired effect. You could use sponges too, but I think this works really well doing it this way. And it just brings out that embossing. And I love the gold look. And these ink pads are available again, along with the ink refill. So get them real quick, because I think I saw the copper ink pad is on back, not on back order yet, but low inventory already. 
it could be on back order now i'm not sure but i know it was on low inventory yesterday but here's the gold one i know that one's still available so we've got that already isn't that pretty i love that bring in my card base i'm going to take since this is em embossed i like using my multi-purpose glue because it gets the glue in those little grooves and it makes it stick on so much better get along the edges a little bit here in the middle and then this one is just going to go on just like this over the ribbon a little bit so it's pretty much in the center of the card that looks pretty good so now push it down you want to put pressure on it so the glue gets in really well now i'm going to bring in my beautiful image isn't that pretty oh i love this and i'm going to go ahead since this is embossed i'm going to use something oh, i took the cap off i'm going to use the glue again because i want to make sure it stays on the card with no problems so that looks really what well. looks good and I put it on like so that looks good hold it down a little bit and that's on there and now I'm going to bring in some dimensionals I'm gonna bring in my scissors because I'm using the borders up here Go ahead and use these instead. These are a little easier to cut off. Can't remember if I need three or four, so we'll go ahead and cut four. And I always cut them while they're still on the backing. It comes off so much easier that way. Actually, I think we're only going to need three. I'm going to put one on each side and then one here in the middle since I'm using little pieces instead of the full-sized ones. Get the backing off. Oh, that middle one's not going to let go. There we go. Oh, I forgot something I was going to do on this. Let's, before I get it attached, I'm grabbing the gold delicata and I'm going to brush it along the sides. This is an old technique called direct to paper. I remember learning this back when I first started over 16 years ago. And it just makes the edge a little better. I didn't want to have to use a mat because we, we don't have a mat that fits this perfectly. So I thought I'm going to put a little gold on there and make it look a little better. This makes it pop and then put it on glad i didn't forget that that just makes it even more special so there's the card isn't that pretty i just love how elegant this is so make sure you come and join me tomorrow and i'll have another card that uses uh, the paper and the ribbon and it's some embellishments are in this suite too and then on friday i'll have my facebook live and you can uh, join me friday at 3 p.m eastern time on friday november 1st and i'll show you all the products in the suite and also demonstrate another card and a little greeting uh, treat box not greeting box treat box <laughs> so hope you join me and like i said my facebook page link is below in the description and if you like my videos i'd love for you to subscribe i'll have, I have the little subscribe in the bottom right hand corner of the video and you can also subscribe um, in another link at the end of the video and make sure that you click on that little bell if you want to be notified whenever i have a video that way you don't miss any so i hope you have a great day Talk to you soon. Bye.